So this video is an overview of the Teltonica um, RUT-X09 router, which is a quite a heavy duty offering. It's made in Lithuania if you want to avoid getting stuff which is made in China. I'm not too fussed to be honest. I mean most of the stuff inside is probably made in China, so there you go. In the box you've got um, a sort of very basic setup card, which is uh, fairly self-explanatory, didn't really use that. You've got um, a couple of aerials there for uh, uh, receiving and transmitting the mobile data. There's no Wi-Fi aerials included because it doesn't have a Wi-Fi function. Um, there's the transformer there for running it. it. runs between 7 and 50 volts or something, so that's like a 12 volt transformer I think, sits in the middle. You've got the GPS antenna which I was just fiddling around with there. And then uh, in this rather scant packaging you've got the uh, router itself and on the back there you can see the GPS antenna connector in the middle and uh, the um, SMA connectors for the mobile antenna and also a USB socket for um, doing uh, network storage and things. So I've just got this router plugged in now and um, I've got uh, single ethernet cable which goes to a network switch underneath the desk um, it's a, a netgear um, fs series switch which is i've had for a number of years very reliable um, this is the power cable which goes in the front that's plugged in down there on the back i've got a spare connection for the gps connection and i've got two um, male sma connectors coming from my uh, rooftop antenna. Should we have a quick look at that? Okay. See that? It's a uh, X pole, I forget the name of it. Pointing. Pointing X pole um, Mimo antenna. So that goes down there uh, through the wall, through this uh, very neatly drilled hole. What's this one here? Uh, that's um, network cable that goes oh, uh, that goes up to the house. The um, uh, interface on the computer. So when you uh, first set up the router, you'll be greeted with this uh, setup screen. It's got the four steps there you can see on the left, and you just go through, fill those out, and you're on the internet in, you know, probably a minute of actually logging into the config. Um, here's one of the first bits, um, which you can see the systems tab. When we're looking at this first, uh, you can update your firmware here, the firmware here, which is uh, which we I did, which is useful. Um, the router has SMS utilities which you can use to so send the message to the router with your phone and it will do stuff. Uh, you can reboot it for example just by texting reboot to the router uh, which is handy if you're not around. Uh, this is the, the overview page which you're greeted with when you first uh, log in and uh, there's various sort of system information here that you can have a look at, um, most of which I'm not overly interested in. Uh, there's a little pop-out tab on the side which you can just click the arrow to check your network status whether that's the mobile or the um, or the LAN um, which is useful I suppose and what else have we got? Uh, the SIM so you can have a look at set rules for both your SIM cards you can fit two in this thing um, and uh, set things such as data roaming and uh, and that sort of thing um, and this is the services tab which is just way beyond me so I haven't bothered talking about it but as you can see there's quite a significant list of things you can do there and um, yeah so it's a very complicated router. So tinkering done, how does it stack up? Well not too bad. Uh, it took a long time for me to get it all running smoothly but now it is. It's, it's super quick and it's definitely a superior piece of hardware. Uh, to the TP-Link uh, 4G router I was using before, but whether the software is quite as user-friendly, that's another thing altogether. Um, as I say, brilliant hardware, um, but perhaps could do with some more dumbed-down options for uh, the less advanced users. 
So um, yeah, that's the uh, that's the conclusion. Thanks for watching. Cheerio. Bye.